DevilDB lets you do more with all of the data that's locked up in the cells of your spreadsheets. Once you import data into DevilDB, you can search it and explore it and build reports on it. You can view it as tables, you can view it as charts, you can view it as calendars or as maps. You can share these views with other people. You can also build forms that you can share with other people to let them add more data to your database. I'd like to give you a brief, fast-paced demo of what it's like to use DevilDB to build up a new database from scratch. If you like what you see, I hope you'll try it out. Now the best way to get started with Dabble is with some data that you've already got. This is a spreadsheet like many companies might have. It lists sales that you're hoping to close, when you think they might close, how likely you think it is, how much it might be worth if they did, and who's working on the deal. Now to bring this into DabbleDB, all you have to do is copy it, and then switch over to DabbleDB and paste it in. And Dabble will analyze your data, and it'll figure out what the fields are, it'll figure out what their types probably are, so it figures out dates, numbers, money, this kind of thing. You might have to tell it every once in a while something, like here we're going to tell it that this address is a location, not uh, just straight text. So we're going to give this a name, we're going to call each entry in this database sale, and that's all we have to do. It's going to bring it in, and now here we have it. Once you've got your data in Dabble, you can start to explore it. For example, you might want to sort by the date field, or you might want to group by the date field. And not just by the exact date, but by the quarter, or as here, by the month. One of the principles in Dabble is that we try to anticipate the common things you might want to do depending on the data type. So for example, you can do a keyword-like search for New York, and it'll bring up any record that mentions New York anywhere in it, but we can also do more structured searches. So if we add a filter to this date field, we can put in anything to do with dates into here. So if I say 2008, it'll bring back all of the records in that year of 2008, but I can also put in things like next Tuesday, last month, or this month, and that's an intelligent filter that looks at what the current date is, looks at what the dates and the records are, and brings back the right data set. Now once I've got a search like this or a view like this, I might want to do some calculations. So for example, I can easily do a subtotal or an average like that. I can also do multiplications, and it's all, there's nothing to type in, it's all just sort of a point and click. So I can multiply this column by that column, and I'll get a new column, which is the result. And anything that I could do with the original columns, I can also do with the result. So I can now add a subtotal in this one too. Now you might notice that as I'm doing this, we've got doubled subtotals at the bottom here. That's because one of them is for the group, and one of them is a grand total for everything in my current search. If I get rid of the filter, we can see that we have the individual group subtotals, but then if we scroll down to the bottom, we've also got the grand subtotal. Up to now, I've just been exploring, but if I think that this is a view that I might want to share with other people or save for later reference, I can save it and give it a name. And you can have as many different views with as many different totals and groupings and searches and sorts saved in Dabble and go back to them at any time from that menu. So, so far we've only seen views where we see items individually, but you can also look at data in aggregate. That's what the compact view is all about. It takes your groupings from the table view and just shows you the subtotals for each one. The chart is another way to look at data in aggregate. You can choose a particular column that you've got totals on, and you can see that as a line chart or maybe as a bar chart. And the map view is yet another way to aggregate the data. Here, we're taking intelligent advantage of the fact that we know what an address is, so we can figure out from the address what country a record has to do with, or even what state it has to do with, and use that to automatically build a visualization of the data layered onto a map. Just like any other view, we can search these, say we can limit it to a particular quarter, and we can see a map just for that. We can also save them so that we can reuse them and modify them later and share them with others. So if we save this, it'll show up in a menu with the other view that we saved. There's lots more I'd love to show you about building different views and visualizations, but I've only got eight minutes, so let's move on to something else. Here's something you haven't seen before. This is the form that lets you edit an individual entry. It also lets you edit the underlying data model. You can see here, for example, that associate is just a simple text field, but we probably want a pick list, which shows different people at the company and can choose from there who's dealing with the deal. We can configure this field to, instead of being text, be a link to a new kind of entry, and we're going to call this entry person. And what's going to happen here is Dabble's going to go through all of the values for this field, it's going to create a new person entry for each of these, and it's going to automatically link them up to the sales entries we've already got. So let's take a look. We've got a new category here, and the table lists 
every sales associate that was found in that field. And if we look at one of them, we can see that we've got the name, but it also shows links to each of the sales where that name was referenced. Now, these person entries are full-fledged entries, just like the sales entries. So we can add fields to them, too, for example. So if we want to capture this phone number for every one of our associates, we can do that. And in fact, in the table here, we can add a column for phone number, and we can trigger that into edit mode, and then we can add phone numbers for each of them very quickly, as long as I don't make too many typos. We think this kind of incremental evolution and improvement of your data model is super important. And in fact, let me show you an even more complicated example of that. If we go back to one of these sales, we can see that we now have this nice link to the associate, but we have the email address still listed as part of the sale. Now that's wrong. The email address should belong to the associate. And all we have to do is configure the field and say, this belongs to person, not to sale. And DabbleDB will do the hard work of figuring out which email addresses appeared next to which associates. And when I refresh this, you can see that the person category now has this brand new column email address, and it's all matched up correctly. So Alex is Alex's email address, Andrew has Andrew's email address, and so on. This kind of power to rearrange your data model on the fly is just something that I haven't seen anywhere else, and I think it's extremely cool. The last part of Dabble that I have time to show you is how you share your database with other people. Starting with any view that you have saved, you can build what we call a page. Now the simplest kind of page is just a copy of that view, always kept up to date, and it's at a simple URL that you can link to or email out either to anyone or you can restrict it to certain users of your database. You can see it's much simpler than the general Dabble UI. All it's got is the view and optionally a way to search the entries. If you want, this can also include a form which lets people edit entries or add new ones into the database. This is perfect if you have people that you want to be able to work with the data, but you don't want to let log in to the full Dabble UI. And you can really provide them with a customized user experience. You can use this drag and drop form builder to create sections, different columns, arrange the fields the way you want. You can also add text and add any explanations or embed any HTML or pictures or formatting that you want onto your form. When you're done, you can either send this link out to people as a standalone website or maybe embed it into an existing website that you've already got. Let's give this a name. We'll switch back to the preview and see what this looks like with the form. You can see that with the custom text and the custom layout, this is a nice, easy form for someone to use, and yet all of the usual dabble tricks still work. So for example, I can type in next Thursday into a date field and it'll understand. The report that's embedded here is live, so as soon as I submit, the subtotals will all update. I'm going to end by showing you one of my favorite features, although it's very simple, and it's the simplicity that I like so much. As soon as you upload your logo, not only will the logo appear at the top of the page, but the color scheme will be changed to match the colors of your logo. This makes pages look great. If we go back to the preview, we can see the generic blue background changes to a red and white background to match this Canadian flag logo, or indeed, of whatever company logo you upload. I'm Avi Bryant from DabbleDB, and that's all the time I've got for now, but come give our 30-day trial a shot, and I think you'll be impressed.